If you've ever spoken to someone whose first language isn't English, they'll often say it's difficult to learn English. This is for a multitude of reasons. One being is that in English, words look one way, but they're pronounced completely differently. Take the states Kansas and Arkansas, for example. Kansas is pronounced Kansas. Arkansas is Kansas with an AR in the front, so you would think it'd be pronounced Arkansas, but no, it's Arkansas. Why is this one Kansas, but this one is not Arkansas? America, explain! Explain, what do you mean in Arkansas? And ladies and gentlemen, that is the most you'll probably hear anyone talk about the state of Arkansas. Back to the topic at hand. Another reason English is confusing is because often a single word with the same spelling can have different definitions. Throw in slang and all hell can break loose. Take the word dog, for example. Ask Peter, who's the captain of his local Frisbee golf team, what is the definition of a dog? And he'll say, man's best friend. Ask Keisha from around the way the same question, and she'll most likely say, a dog would be her deadbeat baby daddy. <laughs> You serious? English is confusing. I think we all can agree. Most of y'all listening to this video have been speaking English your whole life and you barely can speak it. But you know what wasn't confusing? Is when Drake announced For All The Dogs. The rollout for this album has been nothing short of a spectacle. It started off with a poetry book. See, for those of you unaware, Drake released a poetry book ironically titled Titles Ruin Everything. And in that book, at the end, it's revealed he'd been working on an album. The book said specifically, I made an album to go with the book. Hold up, let me activate my light skin voice. <laughs> I made an album to go with the book. They said they missed the old Drake. Girl, don't tell me for all the dogs. It was clear as day he felt like he was developing a sound that was sure to get his core fan base riled up. When you say they missed the old Drake, girl, don't tempt me, most people are gonna assume you're gonna channel the energy we saw during his run from comeback season to nothing was the same. Personally, I expected him to channel a lot from Take Care. When I hear for all the dogs, I'm thinking we're about to get a Marvin's Room 2, a concept album that speaks to the highs and lows men face dating in this day and age with hopefully ending on a positive note. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to report that we got none of that. Before we talk about the music, you know the rules around here. We gotta break down the album art for the album. It sucks. All right, let's talk about the music. The first red flag with this album is the track list. For All The Dogs is 23 songs clocking in at almost an hour and a half runtime. That is entirely too long. The best albums are usually 10 to 15 tracks. When I saw 23 songs, I knew this album was gonna be full of fat. To take it a step further, I'm gonna speculate on why Drake did this in the first place. See, for those of you unaware, Drake is one song away from surpassing Michael Jackson for the most number one singles on the Billboard Top 100. There's no way for me to prove this, but my gut tells me he just threw a bunch of tracks on the album hoping one of them sticks so he can break that record he's already passed mj for the most top tens so this is the last record he needs to do to be considered the goat by some people that's a whole nother conversation in itself by the way mj didn't peak during the stream era so he can't benefit from the easy access to music like drake can he had to actually sell records not to mention as much of a fan as i am of drake his music is never touching michael jackson's so i don't even know why this is a conversation look put me on an island and you ask me look do you want to listen to Michael Jackson or Drake for the rest of your life while you're stranded on this island? I'm taking Thriller a hundred out of a hundred times. Now let's get into the album. For All the Dogs is not a concept album. It is a large collection of singles and this is where Drake first drops the ball. There are some songs on this album that are in the theme of For All the Dogs. It makes me think early on there was a concept, but then there's just stuff here that serves no purpose, which is why I think he's chasing sales records at this point. To be fair though, the album does start off strong. I enjoyed tracks one to three. Virginia's beats production is dope, the vocals on Amen are a vibe, and 21 and Drake are sliding on Calling For You. All three of these songs fall in the theme of the album as well, but then track four is mid and it's all downhill at track five titled Daylight. Daylight is a great example of Drake just being out of touch. It sounds like a man who told himself a lie so much that he's starting to believe it. I remember when Take Care dropped and Drake said, you gonna make me have to catch a body like that? And everybody clowned him. It was because nobody believed he was out here thugging like that. I'm like, come on bro, you're, you're a good kid from the suburbs of Toronto. There's nothing wrong with that. It's one thing to flirt with that stuff, which he's done in the past, but in daylight, it's near a drill record. He's just boasted about catching a body in daylight. The icing on the cake is how the song ends. The beat switches and then Adonis Graham, his son, comes through to save the rap game with amazing bars like this. Don't talk to my man like that. I like when you like it. My, my, my man. 
ma, 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 man. <laughs> the very next track is titled First Person Shooters featuring J. Cole. Drake didn't even show up. Cole straight washed him on this record. And the worst part is, is that not only did Cole wash him, but he found a way to sneak promote his new album, The Fall Off, during this verse. Now, this could be me digging too deep, but the fact Cole washed Drake on Drake's song, then says his new album is called The Fall Off, is freaking hilarious. It was like he was subtly taking a jab at Drake, whether it was his intention or not. I like this song, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't because of Drake. Next up is I Don't Give a Fuck featuring Yeet. This song is so out of place. It sounds like a Yeet song featuring Drake, but it's a Drake album. The beat is catchy, but there's absolutely no emotion in the record. It's just two people babbling about nothing. I'm cool with Drake collaborating with Yeet. I get it. He's hot right now, but what I would prefer is for Drake to have Yeet step into Drake's lane to give us something different. It feels like Drake is almost having like a midlife crisis and he's just hanging out with all the young, hot, cool people and you're a level above these people. You need to make them step to your level instead of you coming down to their level. And the perfect example of this is what I was talking about in my review of Killer Mike's album. One of my favorite songs on that Killer Mike album was featuring Killer Mike, Andre 3000, and Future on it. It was great because it was clear Mike sat Future down and said, we're doing it this way and this is how I want you to enhance the record with your style. I'm personally not a fan of Yeet. I don't want to hear Yeet on a Drake record. It was just a bunch of babbling, but if you're going to do it, make him step in your lane. Be a leader. 7969 Santa, forgettable. Slime you out, underwhelming. The lyrics were cool, but I didn't like the way this one sounded sonically. I think him and SZA should have went for a different vibe, maybe something a little bit more up tempo. Next is Bahama Promises. This record, hard. One of the best songs on the album. And truthfully, this is what more of the album should have sounded like. I don't mind when Drake sings. The production was a vibe, the lyrics were meaningful, and you can hear the passion in Drake's voice. This was the closest thing to a Marvin's Room vibe, in my opinion. Probably my favorite song on the album. Next is Tried Our Best, which is okay, but sonically, it does sound identical to Slime You Out. Honestly, tracks 11 to 14 are skippable. That's when What Will Pluto Do comes in, and this one is a banger. And all the parties, it sounds like Drake was watching all of my shit I don't like videos on my gaming channel. Now, 8 a.m. in Charlotte, that's a tough record. That's just him dropping bars over a soulful beat similar to previous songs like 5 a.m. in Toronto. I would have liked to have seen more of that, too, as well as that, that singing on the Bahamas joint. But at this point, the album, I'm not gonna lie, I'm losing interest. Track 18, skip. Track 19 suffers from the same issue as the Yeet record. It's a Bad Bunny song featuring Drake. I'm sure it will get the Latin markets, but for me, skip. I almost turned the album off at this point, but I'm glad I didn't because that's when I got to track 20, which is Rich Baby Daddy featuring Sexy Red and SZA, and I really like this song. She says, bend that ass over. Let that coochie breathe. Shake that ass for Drake. Shake that ass for me. And that is definitely for all the dogs in the club. All my sassy kings are gonna love that record. It just feels out of place being at the end of the album. I think they should have put it more towards the middle so it flowed better with things. Track 21 to 23 are all skips to me. Track 21 is kind of catchy, but him and Yachty ain't talking about nothing. I think it'll be forgettable in the long run because it's clearly just chasing the trends of today. Honestly, I think this album is mid. It could have been so much better if they removed half of the songs, but then we would have been given a decent album at best. The music here just feels uninspired. For All the Dogs feels like a continuation of Her Loss, but with Her Loss, he got a pass for me because it's clearly two rappers from two different worlds just having fun but when your album drops we expect more drake instead what we got is a joe button rant where he expresses on his podcast his frustrations with drake's lack of music maturity which was followed by a response as long as snake way from drake on instagram that basically amounts to i'm richer than you you haven't reached my heights of success therefore you cannot critique my music i think joe could have expressed his frustrations without emotion because the unfortunate reality is, is that it doesn't matter how true messages if it's delivered in an emotional matter all people are going to hear is how it was said versus what was said what joe was saying is he's looking for drake to be a leader to develop a unique sound for him versus just trying to fit in with whoever's the hot new artist that's the reason we fell in love with you in the first place we want to know what's going on with the 36 year old version of you because you are 36 and on this album in some places it kind of sounds like you're having a midlife crisis and don't tell me it's not possible to mature with hip-hop we've seen it with nas he's dropped in some of the best music of his career and he's 50. Cole and Kendrick drop once every blue moon. Whether you like their latest project or not, you cannot deny the impact that it's felt when they drop. It's because they developed a sound they wanted to make versus chasing trends and that's why those two have widened the gap from Drake in terms of the big three. I, The big three, he's at three for me right now. At least 
in my opinion. As for Drake, you can't write a novel stating I'm richer than everyone else and what Joe says doesn't matter seeing as you wrote a whole novel in response. It clearly got under your skin. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way, you're human. But responding to claims that you're out of touch by saying, shut up, I'm richer than everyone else, only proves Joe's point. Perhaps you've surrounded yourself with too many yes men that are pump, pump, pumping up your head. But hey, I'm just saying.